taking refuge in the Dharma. Then we take refuge in the teachings of the Buddha, the Dharma. We take refuge in the Dharma as path. In this way, we find that everything in our life situation is a constant process of learning and discovery. We do not regard some things as secular and some things as sacred, but everything is regarded as truth, which is the definition of Dharma. Dharma is also passionlessness, which in this case means not grasping, holding on, or trying to possess. It means non-aggression. Usually, the basic thread that runs through our experience is our desire to have a purely goal-oriented process. Everything we feel should be done in relation to our ambition, our competitiveness, our one-upmanship. That is what usually drives us to become greater professors, greater mechanics, greater carpenters, greater poets. Dharma, passionlessness, cuts through this small, goal-oriented vision so that everything becomes purely a learning process. This permits us to relate with our lives fully and properly. So, taking refuge in the Dharma as path, we develop the sense that it is worthwhile to walk on this earth. Nothing is regarded as just a waste of time. Nothing is seen as punishment or as a cause of resentment and complaint. This aspect of taking refuge is particularly applicable in America, where it is quite fashionable to blame everything on others and to feel that all kinds of elements in one's relationships or surroundings are unhealthy or polluted. We react with resentment, but once we begin to do that, there is no way. The world becomes divided into two sections, sacred and profane, or that which is good and proper and that which is regarded as a bad job or a necessary evil. Taking refuge in the Dharma, taking a passionless approach, means that all of life is regarded as a fertile situation and a learning situation always. Whatever occurs, pain or pleasure, good or bad, justice or injustice, is part of the learning process. So there is nothing to blame. Everything is the path. Everything is dharma. That passionless quality of dharma is an expression of nirvana, freedom, or openness. And once we have that approach then any spiritual practice we might go through becomes a part of the learning situation rather than merely ritualistic or spiritual or a matter of religious obligation. The whole process becomes integral and natural. We have always tried to make sense out of the looseness an unsatisfactoriness of life by trying to make things secure and trying to freeze that washed out quality into some definite storyline. But now we can no longer make very much sense out of it. Things constantly change, constantly move, constantly become something else. So now we begin to work with the basic premise 
that that flow or fluctuation of ups and downs in our lives can be seen as a mirror reflection or as waves in the ocean. Things come close to us and we can almost hold on to them, but then they disappear. Things seem as if they are just about to make sense. Then suddenly there's immense confusion and what was about to make sense seems quite remote, a million miles away. We are constantly trying to grasp something and we lose it just as we think we have our fingertips on it. This is the source of frustration, suffering, or dukkha as the Buddha called it. Dukkha is the first noble truth, recognizing that we begin to make sense out of nothing so to speak. Transitoriness begins to become more meaningful than trying to freeze truth into a solid lump. That realization, understanding the fluctuation that goes on and working with it, is the meaning of taking refuge in the Dharma. This approach involves a quality of directness and absence of deception. Or we might even say absence of politeness. It means that we actually face the facts of life directly, personally. We do not have to come up with any padding of politeness or ordinary cheapness, but we actually experience life and it is very ordinary life. Pain is pain and pleasure is pleasure. We don't have to use another word or innuendo. Pain and pleasure and confusion, everything takes place very nakedly. We are simply ordinary. But nakedness and absence of politeness don't necessarily mean being completely savage. We are naked just in going without the padding that we usually provide ourselves with. With our friends, with our relatives, in everything that goes on, we can afford to be very simple and direct and personal. In that way, all the things that go on in life economic, domestic, and spiritual are no longer regarded as belonging in separate compartments, but everything is combined into one situation. That is what it means to follow the path of the Dharma. Neither hot, intense moments of complete claustrophobia, nor cool, Non-caring moments are regarded as either extraordinarily good or extraordinarily terrible. Those are just the fashions of life that we are involved in. It is a natural process taking place constantly. Taking refuge in the Dharma means relating to everything that happens from the splinter in your little finger to your granddad's committing suicide in your name. From the littlest to the biggest as part of that natural process. There are all sorts of shapes of journeys taking place constantly and all of them are just a trick. They are just interesting facets of life. But still, you can't just say, let's leave it alone. Let's just watch everything and become great poets. Oh no, you can't just write poems about it 
play music about it, or dance to it. You have to get into all those facets of life completely. And getting into them is the meaning of path. They become the path. That is accompanied by the practice of meditation, which actually makes the whole thing very clear and precise. The clearer our minds become, the more real and vivid become all the little things that are promising and threatening, the hopes and fears, the pains and pleasures. The Dharma is traditionally divided into two aspects. The first is what has been told, which means the Holy Scriptures, the books of the teachings which have been written from the time of the Buddha until the present. Those sacred books, which have been handed down from generation to generation, contain the truth of what has been experienced, which is the second aspect of the Dharma. Throughout the Buddhist lineage, Individuals have experienced reality and truth within the teachings, and this can also be experienced by you. It is a discovery within your own life that happens, both with your teacher and by yourself. It happens particularly through your experience of meditation, both in formal sitting practice and in meditation in action. Taking refuge in the Dharma means that the experiences that go through your life, pain and pleasure alike, are also sacred teachings. The teachings are not sacred because they are discovered in space or because they came from the sky and were given by divine principles but the teachings were discovered in the heart, in human hearts, in Buddha nature. For example, the Buddhist canon, the Tripitaka, is based on somebody's experience. It is all somebody's discourse. The 108 volumes of sutras are spoken words, communications from one human being to another. The Buddha, who was fully awakened, was communicating with other human beings who were not awakened, were half awakened, or were in a somewhat awakened state. The truth has never come from the sky. It has always come from the human condition. The Four Noble Truths of the Buddha describe the human experience of pain, the origin of pain, the possibilities of salvation, and the possibilities of the path. These are very literal truths. They are the direct truth rather than something that was manufactured upstairs. So in taking refuge in the Dharma, the books of the teachings are not regarded as mystical writings that were created by the clouds and the sun meeting together and engraving script on a tablet. These books were written with ink and pen on pieces of paper. The memories of the seminars, talks, and discourses that Lord Buddha gave were recorded simply as a description of what an awakened man said. How an awakened person conducted himself in the living situation So taking refuge in the Dharma has nothing to do with unearthly influence. 
It has nothing to do with Martians. And it has nothing to do with Jehovah either. But it definitely has something to do with sanity. Taking refuge in the Dharma means that human beings experience can be heightened so much that extraordinarily we can actually awaken ourselves within ourselves. Once again, whatever goes on in our minds is a learning situation. The love and hate relationships that evolve around us, the sense of misfortune, the sense of being lucky, the sense of defeat, the sense of arrogance and egohood, the sense of patriotism, the sense of smartness, the sense of being special, and the sense of confusion, all are included in one particular basic situation. That is the path. It is the only way. It is the only thing that we can work on. We cannot just milk the cow of the guru all the time, whenever we are hungry or thirsty. But we can experience our lifestyle and our process of development according to the Dharma of what has been told. Then we become in tune with the Dharma of what has been experienced at the same time, as the followers of the Dharma have done in the past, which is very powerful and very meaningful for all of us.